Okay, this video is about the causes of falls in the elderly. You know, I talk to neurologists all the time, and I had this lady friend neurologist, and she said, you know, she wanted to try to minimize the number of patients falling all the time because every day I see patients falling. It's, I, I, I can't tell you how many thousands of times I've seen this history. You know, old patient fell, hit head, and quite often old patient fell, hit head, and on blood thinners, okay? That happens all day long at every hospital in the Western world. Okay, so... Anyways, my neurology friend said, you know, she started a falls clinic, was very enthusiastic, but she said she pretty quickly realized it was mostly a dementia clinic. And if you look at the brains, a lot of these old adults that are cognitively impaired, they'll often have multiple bright spots on what's called a flare sequence. And those are small strokes, often so-called silent strokes, and they'll often coalesce to be a bigger stroke. And this is in the association um, tissue, you know, where the, the white matter, where the myelinated fibers are next to the, the lateral ventricles. Okay, so anyways, what I'm trying to say is just, you just don't want to get into that situation. And the way you avoid that is the typical stuff we talked about. Eat the low-fat, low-sodium, whole food, vegan diet with no oil so you get good blood flow to your brain. But what are some other causes of falling in patients who are otherwise seemingly relatively healthy? A very common cause of falling is overtreated hypertension, and the patient becomes hypotensive. The whole purpose of blood pressure is to get blood to the top of your brain, your cerebral cortex, to pump that blood against gravity. So if you overtreat the hypertension, drop their pressure too low. It might look nice, 120 over 70, but that's not enough for the, some of them to get adequate blood flow to the, their brain. They'll fall down, and they could hurt themselves. Okay, overtreated diabetes. You know, it's been said, you know, plenty of times by Dr. McDougall and others, if you overtreat diabetes and make these patients markedly hypoglycemic, the brain runs on glucose, okay? The brain doesn't get enough glucose. The patient can fall. If they're in a car, they could crash their car. It's very dangerous, okay? So overtreated diabetes with hypoglycemia, okay? Intensive management of diabetes in that sense to keep blood sugars low leads to uh, increased mortality. Okay, statin medications. This was actually described in the Dr. McDougall newsletter, September 2009, and there's a reference right there. It makes the muscles weak, and it can cause some other physical problems, and the patients have increased risk of falling. Uh, statin medications in general are pretty overrated. They're also mitochondrial inhibitors, you know. You know, you know, there's a mitochondrial theory of aging. There's a mitochondrial theory of cancer. There's a mitochondrial theory of insulin resistance. Why would I ever want to take a mitochondrial inhibitor medication? Stupid. Okay, alcohol and other substance abuse. People often have really bad falls from alcohol or you know opioids and some other substance abuse can lead to bad falls. Doing stupid stuff like riding one of those uh, you know skateboards with a motor on it. That's incredibly stupid. Don't ever let your kid ride a skateboard with a motor on it. I've seen terrible skull fractures and intracranial hemorrhage from that. It's a very stupid thing to do. We're made to be able to go at running speed and to fall down, okay? And again, a healthy person at running speed will put their hands down, be a little bit embarrassed when they fall, but they'll get up, they'll be fine. A little bit of a sting in the hands, but so what? Okay, um, these elderly fragile people, they can be hurt quite bad from just a standing fall because uh, they're so fragile. They don't have much muscle to protect them. They don't have very quick reflexes to catch their fall. Okay, prescription drugs can cause falls. Of course, we talked about overtreated hypertension, overtreated diabetes, but also sedatives. Uh, some of your, you know, benzodiazepines, antihistamines can make you real sleepy. Uh, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors uh, for depression sometimes can impair, uh, increase people's risk of falling. Some of these psych, other psych medicines, antipsychotics, we talked about neurologic side effects of fluoroquinolones recently in a video. Um, it's very common for polypharmacy in uh, older patients to be on multiple pills. I can tell you, ask any doctor who works in a Western hospital, they will tell you lots of patients are on 10, 15, even 20 pills every day. It's crazy. Okay, sarcopenia. A lot of people are really fragile and weak. So the way you avoid being real fragile and weak is exercise every day. You don't have to exercise a lot. Just walk up some stairs, you know, do something to challenge yourself a little bit. And if you got nowhere to go and no money, do some isometrics, okay? It's not that hard. Some people will have uh, poor problems with their balance because of joint pain from arthritis, hip or knee replacements, uh, from diabetic neuropathy at the lower extremities and whatnot, um, from spinal radiculopathy type of uh, nerve problems to the lower extremities. Okay, uh, get your daily exercise. We talked about eating the optimal diet. You know, we all know that one. Um, spinal degeneration, too. I see a lot of patients with basically a fused spine from their sacrum, their pelvis, all the way up to their skull. And it's all from, you know, degenerative 
disc disease, you know, which is largely ischemic, but there's other things to it. Trauma can do it, having to work in awkward positions. Truck drivers often have messed up spines, you know, from sitting so much. Um, that'll decrease the blood flow to the spine. Walking improves blood flow to the spine. Walking is good for the spine. There's also the chemicals F- minus and GP that I've talked about them before on my back pain lectures, how they interfere with collagen, ligament strength, and uh, function. Okay, we talked about dementia. And lots of things cause people to dementia. All the atherosclerosis risk factors, just hypertension and diabetes, even when they're poorly treated, undertreated, because they worsen atherosclerosis to the brain. You get cerebral hypoperfusion, lack of blood flow. Omega-6, PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids causing lipid peroxidation and brain damage. It's like the Tetsumori Yamashima theory of brain damage. Um, Japanese guy, um, neuroscientist. Okay, um, let's see. Antiacids contribute to dementia and are seem to be associated with increased risk of hip fractures in other ways. Excessive dietary vitamin D pills. Dr. McDougall will tell you he thinks vitamin D pills are, can be quite toxic, and he does not prescribe them except in very, very extenuating circumstances. And that's in contradiction to what a lot of other people do. Um, other causes of tinnitus, um, dizziness. There's a lot of things that will cause tinnitus, and that can impair a person's um, perceptive ability to maintain their balance. Dizziness for other reasons can be side effects of other medications. Parkinson's disease, some of these Parkinson's patients are very awkward and poorly coordinated. I've seen them have very bad falls. I've seen patients with Parkinson's fall from standing and get pelvis fractures, you know, major fractures. People with blurred vision, they're more likely to trip over objects, bump into things. Uh, you can, you know, you can treat their vision problem. You know, you can help an older person by, you know, having the furniture in their, their bedroom very simple so they have a clear pathway to the bathroom. You can put handrails in along the wall that they can hold on to as they go to the bathroom at night because they don't want to turn the light on at night. The man wakes up to pee because he's got a big prostate. The floor can be slippery in the bathroom, so you want to make sure that's dried up. You can put a high-traction rug in the bathroom, you know, for him to walk on handrails, of course. Outdoors, people often will trip when it's icy outside. Old people really should not go outside when it's icy if they can avoid it, you know. Just reschedule your medical appointment rather than, you know, fall on the sidewalk like so many of them do. Um, you know, some old people, they're really better off just living in a ranch house. And the other thing, it's nice, you know, extended families are a great blessing to a person. Like, remember the Rosetto effect of the Italian families in Rosetto, Pennsylvania, where the extended families all live together. I made videos about this so they can help each other. And this is a famous painting called Filial Piety, whereby the old guy's paraplegic, but he's still alive because the family's taking care of him. you got a family, you know, one guy can't walk so well, one person has poor balance. Well, then the other person can, can go up and down the stairs and do the laundry for him. The benefits of an extended family are greatly under-recognized. So, anyways, these are some common falls of... Uh, common causes of falls in the elderly, and the best thing to do is prevent it by being healthy. The best health insurance you could have for old age is to stay healthy, and that's how you do it. Exercise, manage your stress, eat a healthy diet. So, anyways, hope that's helpful.